guys, Kinsey here, and I'm back with another episode of what I'm currently playing. And I'm going to start with a few games that I recently did my first playthrough, and I'm definitely going to go back and play again. But the first one is Donut County. It came out for Switch in just last December, so December 2018, and it's a game I've been dying to play. But originally it just came out on, like, Steam and iPad and... I wanted to play it on Switch, and I knew it was coming, so I waited. <laughs> but this game has the best writing. It's not that long. I think I completed it in like, I don't know, two hours, three hours, something like that. But the writing is so clever. So it's super like Katamari-ish. So the whole premise is that you're kind of playing as BK, who is a raccoon who works at the donut shop. And... He has an app, and he's trying to get enough points to win a quadcopter, because, of course. But it turns out, he thinks he is delivering donuts. But what it is, is a world-sucking hole goes to wherever that delivery address is, and pulls them down to the earth. And the way it's Katamari-like, is you start by picking up, you know, like, little boards or nails or tacks or things like that, like in Katamari. And eventually, you're sucking up, you know, like fence posts and trailers and automobiles and you're just sucking up like this whole little level. And Donut County also has a little bit of like different layers because it also starts introducing puzzle aspects where you have to like, you know, suck up water and then like put it over here and like, and eventually you get different powers. So you get like a trampoline thing so you can like bounce things up and you know, hit something else and cause it to do stuff. It's so fun. <laughs> And what's hilarious about this game is it kind of starts at the at the end in a way. So you guys are all sitting down at, you know, down a hole in the earth and you're just like, great, now what's going on? And you're slowly realizing that it's because of this, you know, your raccoon friend who is like playing this app trying to get enough points to win a quadcopter and he's the one doing it. So you're like, oh, they disappeared right after they ordered donuts. And you're all trying to explain to him why it's his fault and he is not listening. But it's really cool because it ends up just being about raccoons taking over the town and wanting to collect trash. It's fantastic. And the writing is so good. So I highly recommend that you check out Donut County. It's also pretty cheap. I'm pretty sure it's under $20 on Switch. So definitely check it out. And next up is another game that I just had my first playthrough of, and I will definitely be playing it again. And that is Gris on the Nintendo Switch. Well, it, Gris? Gris. Gris. I think it's gray in Spanish, so it's gris. But most people are saying gris. I don't know. You can say it however you want, because it doesn't matter. This game is so beautiful. It looks all very, like, watercolor, looks hand-drawn, and it's just so wonderful. And it's about this girl's journey about grief. So you're going through the different layers of grief and adding color back into the world. Because it starts out with that, you know, you're on the statue of a girl and you try to call out and you can't because you've lost your voice and thus, you know, in a way her agency in the game and you fall down into like this gray world and then you're slowly building stuff, you know, back up. It could, you know, it's technically about grief, but I think it could also be about fear or your own struggles that you're going through. Because there's even a part where it like, there's like a black, mass that's trying to pull you back in and that it you know has happened to so many of us really and it's just such a beautiful game I cannot like stress how beautiful this game is <laughs> um the graphics are so smooth and it's just beautiful and you know it is still a puzzle platformer so you have to like collect stars to light up roots in the constellation and open up new areas and to get new powers you'll get like a block power which that one's actually you know with the whole theme of the game it's pretty powerful because without the block power you know all these winds just keep pushing you back and you can't move forward but then once you get this block power where you like you know become a block then you can finally push your way through the storms and it's just a really beautiful game that, like, it doesn't outwardly, you know, say, like, hey, everybody, we're grieving here. Like, it's just very, very creative and beautiful. And I think everyone who plays it kind of experiences their own journey. So it's wonderful. I definitely recommend checking it out. Also under $20. I think it's like 15 or something like that. I don't want to say it because I'll be wrong, but I think it's something like that. But totally worth it. And that one is developed by Nomada Studio. 
out of Barcelona, Spain, and is published by Devolver Digital, one of my favorites, of course. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to go to my first beer. And so, full disclosure, we are in the Seattle, like, Snowmageddon 2019 right now. So the beers I chose are, like, not really themed, unfortunately. They're what was in my fridge. <laughs> But the first one, you know what? It's artistic. I could say this could go with Gris, sure. Um, but this is the Strawberry Bach by Unveiled Brewing, which is a brewery out of California. And it is 6% alcohol, and it's a Bach. And a, so a Bach, if you don't know, is a kind of a German-style lager. And it comes in a whole bunch of different varieties that, you know, maybe you've heard of. So it's just like there's a Bach, there's a Mai Bach. Uh, Doppelbach is normally like the darker version of it and uh, yeah this one's got strawberries and look at this can it's so cool I bought it based on the can let's be real <laughs> but <laughs> let's give it a try all right I kind of like that it's not red because then that makes me think that they didn't just use like strawberry extract because that'll be red it smells like strawberries, not like, but I am strawberries, but like a little bit. It's really good. It definitely has the strawberry flavor, the very light, crisp, like lager flavor. So definitely a German beer. I can tell. <laughs> They're always a little, their lagers are like kind of, I don't know, yeasty. Ooh, that sounds gross, but it tastes good. Yep, see? Lager. Clear. Ooh. <laughs> but, oh, the strawberries are even stronger on the aftertaste. That's good. Mm -mm -mm. All right. And my next game is one that I currently just started playing. I finally bought it because it, you know, I, and, oh, well, it's Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> and the reason I waited so long to play it is because... Well, I mean, it was getting not very good reviews, and people were hating on it, and I figured now, you know, I got the Deluxe Edition brand new for $12.99, so it has all the patches that it's going to get, so now it's probably, it's going to be the best version of it. So I just started playing it, and I'm actually really enjoying it, but I love Bioware games. I love trying to figure out who I'm going to bone, obviously. <laughs> Right now I'm trying to do either PB or Vetra is when I'm breaking it down. Jaw's pretty cool though, because I'm not super far, so I just got Jaw. And he's like one of the new race of aliens that they're introducing because they found a new race going to Andromeda. And if you don't know, because maybe you wrote it off right away and never looked back, but what Mass Effect Andromeda is about is that there's basically species arcs, like huge spaceship, you know, that has a whole species in cryo that is, you know, they left the Milky Way galaxy to, you know, find something, a new home in Andromeda. So they slept for like 600 years and then were woken up and what they were met with, what these were supposed to be golden worlds as they discovered, are all kind of ravaged by this scourge. And is it natural? Is it alien? We don't know. We'll have to find out. And so, of course, you just go through a bunch of trials and tribulations trying to set up new outposts and make these planets livable. So it's actually, I think it's really fun. And you get to, you know, go around in the Mako again. Well, the Nomad. It's, come on, it's the Mako. So that's fun. So you get to, like, roam around on the planets again, and that's always a blast. And I don't know, I'm really enjoying it. It definitely has things that I don't love about it. I don't particularly like the writing, but the characters do kind of make up for that a little bit because I do like the characters and some of the writing's not great and the voice actors do a good job with what they have to work with. I also really dislike the quest management. I've started just going to the main map and that's how I've been, you know, selecting what quest I want to do next because I've lost some in the quest thing. I'm like, well, I know I want to go look at that stupid fetch quest thing, but I can't find it and it, it was a whole thing. <laughs> but all in all, it's not perfect. And it's definitely no Mass Effect 2. There's not even a comparison. But I'm really enjoying Mass Effect Andromeda for what it is. So, yeah. And another game I've been playing a lot of is also a download game, but it's called Melbit's World. And it's actually a really cool, like, party-style game that takes advantage of the PlayStation 4's Playlink. 
which means you also download an app on your phone and you control the game from here. And it's actually pretty fun. It kind of reminds me of like Lemmings meets Pushmo. So it's kind of this, you know, super kawaii puzzle game, but it's like Lemmings, but 3D and like multiplayer. So different people control different things, be it a, a platform, like a rotating log, um, you know, bumpers, all kinds of stuff. And you're just trying to get these characters, you know, from the start to the end. And it's in a 3D environment. And it starts off pretty easy, you know, like puzzle games do. But it does get pretty challenging. And you can, you know, unlock special things and outfits and things to customize your characters. Well, I guess by outfits, I mean like sunglasses, hats, bows, tails, things like that. And so when you see a character like carrying a present because you, you finally picked it up and you're like, we're getting bunny ears guy in there. He's going to make it because we want those bunny ears. <laughs> but it is really fun and kind of hectic. So it's two to four players and it's just kind of crazy. It's a little bit difficult to keep track of everything sometimes. And full disclosure, I did have a little bit of trouble with the app. Uh, my partner has an older Galaxy phone and it crashed on that. And sometimes the gyro, so it uses the gyro in your phone where you can like twist things in the level. And sometimes when you try to turn it, it doesn't do it every time. And when you're trying to do it quickly, it can get a little bit frustrating. But with a recent update with the app, it did fix that a little bit. So it is it is better now. Not perfect, but better. <laughs> but this game's really fun and I actually can't wait to try it four player. So it's super kawaii. You keep unlocking really cute levels, really cute characters. It's fun. I think it's definitely worth checking out. And my next game is, okay, so a little bit of backstory. So this quarter I went back to school and it's been fun. I'm only taking one class and I'm taking Japanese too because I took Japanese for a few years in high school and that was a long time ago. So now, you know, I went to Japan and now I have a problem and I want to go back all the time, but I don't speak Japanese very well. So I started supplementing my school with my Japanese coach and I haven't played it too much yet. I just started actually, um, but I did the placement test. They put me in level 11. Yay! <laughs> but what I like about this is it actually helps you like learn to draw the characters because that's what I was noticing in my Japanese class is that I think I have bad like hiragana and katakana handwriting. Like it looks awful. So <laughs> I thought something like this might really help because a lot of the language learning apps, they don't seem to have a lot of like learning the characters too much because I already know them. I just want to write them better. Um, you know, unless it's kanji, there's a lot of apps for that, but you know, I just want to do a little bit more practice and something on the DS is perfect for that. So I am enjoying this so far. So we'll see how much it actually helps and you know, goes along with my classes. All right. And next up is another beer that doesn't match any of them because it was just in my fridge. And that is Hillbilly Ninja. <laughs> It's a hazy pale ale from Parallel 49 Brewing. And I was amazed when I saw this at my uh, bottle shop because Parallel 49 Brewing is an awesome brewery up in Vancouver, Canada. And I'd never see Canadian beers down here, ever. Well, occasionally like Molson and stuff, but whatever. But like microbrews, I do not see Canadian beers down here. And I've always just heard it's because the importing the beer from Canada to the US is like a pain and nobody does it. And that's really, really sad because there are so many amazing breweries up in Vancouver and that's not even that far away. Like Vancouver is closer to me than Portland. And I always forget that even though I go to Portland like all the time. But Parallel 49 is awesome. They, their IPA is called Trash Panda and it's a raccoon. Ugh, I, they're just silly. I really like it. But I hadn't seen this one before, even though I've been to Parallel 49 like several times. So you know what? Let's give it a try. Got some facts for me. Yeah, Canada. 5% alcohol, alcohol by volume. <laughs> it's a hazy pale. And hazies are like all the rage right now in the Pacific Northwest. It was kind of started as a New England style IPA, but it seems like we're kind of making it our own. Uh -huh. Splashed. 
Okay. Definitely hazy. And that kind of normally refers to, like, the color. <laughs> or the fact that you can't really see through it. Like, hazy pales in IPA is, like, almost more like juice than beer sometimes. But looks pretty good. It smells like a pale or an IPA. It's It's citrusy, but also a little bit hoppy. I don't know if it's supposed to be citrusy, but a lot of hazies are normally on the juicy side, so we'll see. Yep, that's juicy. <laughs> um, I don't know, pale ales and IPAs kind of, they cross each other's lines a lot. Like, I think this kind of tastes like an IPA, but whatever. But it's definitely very good. And, you know, I love Pale Ale 49. I'm really liking this whole hazy craziness that's happening. So, yes, I recommend this. It's good. All right. And my last game is kind of a guilty pleasure. And I know I'm back on my bullshit, but it's all Pokemon Let's Go's fault. <laughs> and so I played a lot of Pokemon Let's Go and I absolutely loved it. But then I kind of fell off the wagon a little bit. And then I just got on that Pokemon Go. I have been playing Pokemon Go. I just got my seven-day streak, which I haven't gotten in a really long time since it came out, basically. So, yeah. It's ridiculous. I know. I'm back on my Pokemon Go bullshit, and I'm loving every second of it. <laughs> so, that's what I am currently playing, or I guess recently finished, but I'll be going back through both of those games, so... Yes, I'm currently playing them. And what are you currently playing? Let me know down in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. And you can find me on the internet at Kinzilla, K-I-N-S-Z-I-L-L-A, -L -L on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And thanks for subscribing, and cheers.